Okay, let's worship God with our songs.
name of Jesus, I pray. Okay, I'll read Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Amen. Well, hello. It's me again. Surprise. <laughs> yes, I'm going to deliver a sermon here today and hope this will build up our church. So, uh, have you ever bought something recently? I know it's a weird question, but, but, and I'm pretty sure everyone did buy something because that's what we do to live. We buy food, clothes, cars, etc. You name it. Then what did, what did it cost you? Doesn't please don't tell me uh, you just walked out of the grocery store with the chocolate when we bought it. Did you? Oh. <laughs> <It's a joke. laughs> we pay for things because, we, because every single thing has a value. Uh, or in other words, they are worth something. Now think about us. Uh, our manpower is worth something. That worth is usually converted to, to money. We get paid for our work, sweat, and effort. Even more, uh, your own self is worth Jesus. Now, let me ask you another question. Uh, what would you feel if your employer uh, doesn't pay you what you deserve? What would you feel if someone treats you so poorly the way you don't deserve. Now, what about God? Is God getting what He is worth from us? The essence of all these questions is, of, is all about worship. The word worship originated from worth and ship. Basically means giving someone or something what she, he, or it is worth. And today's a passage answers to this question. What does God deserve from us? In other words, what is true worship He is due from us? So before we delve into today's passage, uh, we should understand what the Bible says about worship. Here's a question. What is worship? I know this is a big question, and everyone has kind of different answers to this question. What is worship? Have you thought about what worship is? Many people would uh, associate worship with Sunday services, just like we're having this, music, or, time, or the time we sing. That's not completely wrong, but only partially correct. Throughout the Old and New Testament, the original Hebrew word and Greek words for worship always have two aspects. Worship as bowing down, prostrating before a superior, and worship as physical work or service. The one I just did is worship as service because I served with my abilities and my body. But at the same time, it's, because it's, uh, it's an action of bowing down or portrait yeah. of the spirit because I sang that song. So the first one is focuses on our heart and attitude of an adoration for God. And the latter one, uh, our focus is on uh, our action for God, on, our, on what we do physically. What's important here is uh, that these two cannot be separated. If your heart is bowing and surrendered to God, just uh, in awe and reverence, you want to do something for Him. Just as naturally uh, one would jump around and screaming around, 
if when he when he finds he's won a lottery. I know this is an extreme example, but you know what I'm saying. You know, your heart and your your action reflects your heart, right? Also, you don't want to seriously serve or do something really uh, special for people you don't highly uh, respect or love. That's why uh, they always go together. The, the two aspects of worship, they always go together as the whole spectrum of worship. So now we are uh, having this, having said that uh, Sunday services, corporate worship, in other words, are only a part of worship, what worship is. One may think, why should I come to a Sunday worship service? Can I just be in a house and worship by myself? It's not as much as important as I thought. So maybe I don't have to attend a Sunday service worship. The answer to this is no. Corporate worship is more than important. Mark Driscoll and Gary Brescius said, corporate worship, is it on the screen? No, not yet. <laughs> corporate worship is essential to our growth, personally, joy, collectively, and witness culturally. God's people gather because in the depth of their regenerated called nature, the Holy Spirit gives them deep in desires to worship God with his people. We want to see God's people. We want to hear God's work in their lives. We want to know of the ways we can lovingly serve them, and we want to be part of something bigger than ourselves that reaches beyond the mundane details of life and connects us all together despite our differences in age, race, gender, and income to seek and celebrate evidences of God's grace. It's like a, a time of a pep talk. Not really, uh, not really necessarily uh, to a, sorry, time, a time like a pep talk is not really necessarily to a sports team because they are, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking a question, is a time of pep talk not really necessary to a sport team because they are not getting goals or scoring? Or because it's just a small chunk of time uh, of the whole game? No, the time of pep talk is essential as, as a game they are playing because it has the power to change the whole game. Of course, corporate worship is uh, way more serious and glorious and, and uh, crucial than a pep talk in a sports game. After or, or it can be before, depending on how you see, a long and difficult race or fight for six days in the world, as we as, as, we as a family and children of God gather together, praise and worship who God is. Celebrate what God has done in each one's life. Be energized and conformed by the word of God and encourage and build up one another. How glorious is this time of corporate worship? If one gets to experience the, these and realizes his or her com comrades are there, are here for him or her, there will be no room for corporate worship is not that important. Now let's go talk about personal worship. A time of personal worship is also important because it nourishes and it nourishes each individual's relationship with God and helps develop the heart and attitude of worship in our daily life. Personal worship generally takes this kind of form. A set aside time to sing praises, read and meditate the word of God, or pray at a quiet personal place or space. However, it doesn't have to be like this form. As long as uh, one can privately enjoy the fellowship with God and worship Him. But do you know uh, that worship wasn't like this at all in the Old Testament time? Remember the Samaritan woman at the well in John 4 asked Jesus about the right place of worship, which means there was a specific place to worship to go. And the right place 
wasn't the only condition for right worship in the Old Testament time. Throughout the Old Testament, we can find tons of the regulations to keep in order to worship God right, such as right people to serve, Levites, long list of orders and right materials and exact measurement for equipment, etc. That's why I think that's why the Old Testament is that's so long. Just kidding, sorry. Uh, let's look at one of the right, uh, regulations God required in the Old Testament. Leviticus 1, 3 to 9. Yeah. If his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he is to bring an unblemished male. He will bring it to the entrance to the tent of meeting so that he may be accepted by the Lord. He is to lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering so it can be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. He is to slaughter the bull before the Lord. Aaron's sons, the priests, are to present the blood and splatter it on, the, on all sides of the altar, that is, at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Then he is to skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priests, will prepare a fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Aaron's sons, the priests, are to arrange the pieces, the head, and the fatta on the top of burning the burning wood on the altar. The offerer is to wash its entrails and legs with water. Then the priest will burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, a food offering, a pleasing aromat to the Lord. See, there are there are so many things to do. Other than burnt offering, there were more other uh, types of offering in the Old Testament, such as. Uh, the grain offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, and the peace offering, which can be the peace offering, which can be thanksgiving offering, in, the, in other words. And except grain offering, which was uh, for acknowledging God's provision, all other offerings required an animal to be killed and burnt and its blood. Trust me, uh, it was not. It was not the scene that you want to joyfully watch and, and happily, happily see. It, it, it was bloody and messy. Whether it's the grain offering or the other offerings, there is one common principle. The offering has to be killed and burnt on the altar. And worship always involves sacrifice. But Jesus' answer to the Samaritan's woman shows the whole thing regarding worship has been changed. Let's read John 4, 21 to 24. Jesus told her, Believe me, woman, an hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know because salvation is from Jews. But an hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes, the Father wants such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. Jesus' answer uh, is basically saying, now you don't need a certain place to go to worship. You don't need uh, all those regulations from the Old, Old Testament to keep for worship, as long as you worship in spirit and in truth. And the time, it can be any time, and it can be now. This has been made possible because Jesus' sacrificial death and resurrection, as we learned a few weeks ago. Now, in today's passage, Paul expounds this whole new paradigm of worship. He goes further, he, he explains more about this new paradigm of worship that Jesus brought. Let's see verse 1 of uh, Romans 12. I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is what this is Paul saying. He means the old way to worship God was about making a sacrifice, but now our true worship is about being a sacrifice. Wait on the picture. So do you see the, the drastic change? This is a ground-shaking change. 
He challenges us to change our perspectives of worship. The old way of worship required a dead sacrifice, offered temporarily, each time we do, but repetitively. The new way of worship requires a living sacrifice, which is ourselves, offered constantly, unceasingly. One thing we need to aware is that this living sacrifice is not the sacrifice of sin, but of thanksgiving. Christ has obviously uh, fulfilled the sacrifice of sin once for all, we learned it. And there's nothing that a believer can add to that sacrifice. It's all done. But the living sacrifice of gratitude and praise is the appropriate sacrifice to be made by those who live only by the mercy of God. This sacrifice is as much as the act of worship of the believer today as the sacrifices of dead animals were the act of worship in Old Testament times. So this new paradigm of worship says our whole being, our whole life to be worshiped. One should not think only a certain time like Sunday service is worship. This lifestyle as worship is a beautiful, fragrant offering that God delights. Okay, now, we got the concept of worship, but then what, what is it to live our life as worship? How would it look like to present ourselves as a living sacrifice? What does that mean? What does it practically mean? In verse 2, Paul kindly explains how this giving, sacri- giving, our, giving of ourselves as a living sacrifice is to be carried out. Let's read verse 2. Do not be conformed to this age but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. So that, he says, so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Living a sacrifice of discerning God's will is a way to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. And in order to discern God's will, Paul says, we must not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Why would Paul say this to the believers in Rome? The answer is easy. Because they were not doing it. At that time, uh, when Paul was writing the letter, one of the big problems of the of the Roman churches was the tension and division between Jews and Gentiles. After the death of Emperor Claudius, who who had kicked out the Jews out of of his uh, empire, Jewish Christians came back to Rome. They saw Gentile Christians with unclean culture and customs taking over the church. They did not like it. They also wanted to impose their uh, Jewishness on Gentiles because they regarded themselves as special. Naturally, Gentile Christians did not like Jewish Christians. Also, they considered themselves as preferred because of Israelites, because of Israel's status of being hardened by God. All of them was not discerning God's will. They did not let the Holy Spirit renew their mind, but were conformed to the world, conformed to what sinful human nature, the old human, the old them says. This is why Paul urged them to not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of their mind. This is probably uh, the perfect version of what Paul was saying. Have you put your faith in Christ? Are you guys God's people? Then you ought to and also want to worship God. Then forget about making sacrifices. Forget about slaughtering lambs or, and offering them. But be a sacrifice, 
Let your way of thinking and living be a sacrifice and worship before God. And that's why Paul, uh, that's why Paul says in verse 3, don't think of yourselves more highly than you should think. As they were to offer their whole life as worship, their true worship at the time Paul was writing the letter to them was to be this. Not hating and discriminating those who have different backgrounds and promoting division and factionalism as the world and our sinful nature do. But thinking the same way having the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look not to his own interests, but rather to, his interest, to the interest of others, as Paul mentioned in Philippians 2 to 4. We are unceasingly worshiping beings. We either worship God or something or someone else. The Jews in Roman church were worshiping their hatred towards their Gentile brothers and sisters. The Gentile in the church were worshiping their bitterness towards their Jewish brothers and sisters. Ultimately, they were somehow worshiping themselves because they served what they think and what they feel and gave their hearts away to that. God's will was less important for them. And that was their idol. What idols today's people have? Money, getting a decent car or house, reputation, others' affirmation, job, being nice, religion, you can name it. Another person, or one's own self, even children or families can be idols, although most of these are good things. Anything can be an idol. Anything that hinders your life to, to be worshipped before God is an idol. Especially we should be careful of good things because they tend to become an idol easily. Being surrounded by all of these, how can we live our life as a worship? We can make money to use it for the advance of the kingdom of God. We can get a car or house or anything in order to serve others for God. We can build good reputation and be nice to others, to be li not to be liked, but to win them over to God. We can take care of our own selves emotionally, physically, spiritually, to be a good servant of God. We can love our children and families, to dis disciple them, and reveal God to them through us. God is to be the center of everything we do, and the ultimate motivation for all, so that our life can be a living sacrifice. In Colossians 3.17, Paul gives us a rule of thumb for making our, uh, our life worship. And whatever you do, in word or, or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. As we wrap up, uh, let me ask you this. What are you worshiping these days? What is your not, become, not being conformed to this age. It might require a significant change or a small change. Let me share my story. In my past, I never knew downloading uh, worship songs without paying for it was illegal and against God's will because it was so a uh, normal thing, a natural thing to do in Korea, even for Christians. I did it to be a competent worship leader. Although my motivation was good, I was still being conformed to this age. Because that's, that was what my society taught me. In this process, the Holy Spirit's role was very important. The Holy Spirit had to convict me 
uh, uh, convinced that, that it was a way of stealing. And I deleted hundreds of MP3 files I had collected for years. Presenting our life as a living sacrifice may be a long time process. Because there are many, so many areas in our life that still need to be changed. And our sinful nature will keep trying to go back to our old nature. Even though we are saved still, declared righteous by the blood of Jesus. And often, it may involve pain. I know nobody likes pain. But often, it may involve pain in the process. Imagine a living sacrifice. You are on the altar as a sacrifice, not dead, but constantly living and burning. It's painful. It's a scary and painful picture. But that's what God wants us to do. However, don't be afraid. Do not lose heart. The Holy Spirit is in this journey, walking with us, and remember Jesus, who walked the excruciating road to the cross and death, sacrificed himself for the forgiveness of our sin. He made this new worship possible. Let's thankfully and joyfully present our life as a living sacrifice. Despite of pain in the process, our triune God who created, his, who created us in his image, who came to us as one of us, who paid his life to bring us into his family, who already defeated our enemy, who resurrected from the dead, who gathered us as a church, his bride, who does not leave us alone, but is dwelling within us, who gives us precious spiritual gifts to serve one another, that God, the God we have been talking about for weeks, is worth our life. The God we come to know, we've come to know through this sermon series, utterly deserves our worship. And let us not forget this, the more complete our life becomes, true worship, the more we get to see the glimpse of the glorious ultimate worship in heaven, where one day we will arrive and where we will spend eternity with God. Is God getting what is worth from you? Let's have a time to reflect. As you come before God now, pray that the Holy Spirit would reveal one area in your life that is not worshiping God and needs to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There might be one more than one, but we can start from one. And, and I encourage you to keep, this, keep doing this process as you keep walking on your faith journey. And this is not about us fixing our lives. It's about us allowing the Holy Spirit to be regenerated. To be, to be more like Him. Let's close our eyes and ask the Holy Spirit now. Jesus, for leading us uh, in more worship through teaching us what worship was about. So thank you for that. Um, for, for those of you who are here in the room, we have these um, communion packets uh, there on the tables. Um, just want to have a moment of just reflecting on what uh, Sisung presented from God's Word today. Um, you know, maybe ask yourself, how is my life being that living sacrifice? Um, what does my personal worship look like? How can I 
trust the Holy Spirit more to um, help me become that living sacrifice, though sometimes it's painful. So as we stop right now to just reflect on what we've heard, we come to communion and we're even more reminded of why we worship. Because the little piece of bread inside reminds us of how Jesus Christ allowed his body to be broken. God allowed his body to be broken so that we could worship him freely. Not have to worry about bringing a sacrifice. He became that final sacrifice. And the blood that was shed points us back to the Old Testament altar where different animals were killed on that altar. Their blood had to be sprinkled. But when Jesus was on the cross, his blood was sprinkled finally forever for all of us. And that's what communion helps us remember. So this little packet of juice in a wafer. And if I just go ahead and just open up the top and take the wafer out. And as you want to, go ahead and, go ahead and eat it. And let that remind you of how Jesus' body was broken for you. And then you just pull off the next layer and drink the juice. And it reminds us just how much Jesus Christ gave so that we could live. So take a moment to reflect on that now as you take communion. shed and you became the final sacrifice. We don't need another. You don't need to be killed again and again and again. Your one time death on the cross, that one sacrifice was completely sufficient to satisfy the judgment that we deserve. That satisfy paying the punishment for our sin. So thank you for reminding us of that right now. As we just studied and heard from Sisung about worship, may it lead us into deeper personal worship. Every day, through whatever we do, everything we say, what we do, even our thoughts, that they all be viewed as a sacrifice we're offering to you. And God, whether we are joining in person in this room, or we're joining on Zoom, or even if we're watching this later on YouTube, we are still in the current situation, we are still joining together for corporate worship. We are still coming together for this through these different avenues. And so, thank you for that. That we can still worship, no matter what's going on in this world, no matter what pandemic is happening, no matter what situation, those don't matter. We can still join and worship you. So thank you for this time that we can worship you together this morning. We ask this in your powerful and precious name, our final living sacrifice, Jesus Christ. Amen.
touch me now Let your love fall down on me I know your love dispels all my fears Through the storm I will hold on Lord And by faith I will walk on Lord my Calvary one day and I will be complete in you Here I am Oh God I bring this sacrifice to you, Lord, your love and never ends, restores me again. So I lift my eyes to you, Lord, in your strength will I break your love fall down on me. I know your love dispels all my fears. Through the storm I will hold on more. And by faith I will walk on more. Then I'll see to you, Lord, your love and never ends, restores me again, so I lift my eyes to you, Lord, in your strength will I break through, Lord, touch me now, let your love fall down me. I know your love dispels all my fears. Through the storm I will hold on more. And by faith I will walk on more. Then I'll see beyond my Calvary spells all my fears through the storm I will hold on Lord and by faith I will walk on Lord then I'll see beyond my Calvary become
completed. And we will be complete in you. And we will be complete in you. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's a worth that will bless your heart. I bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I.
Our life is not about us. Our life is about something, someone much more bigger than us. That's you, Lord. We live to reflect you through our life. To spread your goodness to the world that needs you. Help us to live our life as a living sacrifice, Lord. Each element, each area of our life to be worshipped, to be fragrant offering to you. And thank you for making this happen, Lord. Making this available to us, Lord. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, uh, C. Sang and the Coens, for leading us in worship again. And thank you for joining us. Uh, for those of you who joined us uh, on Zoom and those of you in person, I got the, the team up here to help me out. So, Kirk and Jane, I'm gonna, these are my two kids. So they can, they can, I can hold their hands. They're mine. So, this is all COVID appropriate. So, well, um, just a few announcements as we wrap up today. Um, one, uh, the first one is, and you'll be getting an email about this uh, later this week with further details, but. Uh, we are moving to a different online giving platform. We've been using uh, PushPay for, uh, since our church started. Um, the church that helped us get started, they are the ones who uh, kind of have this already set up. And hold it. I need to be closer. Okay, there we go. I was getting a little bit of feedback. I didn't want to get too close, so sounds good. All right, hey, stay, stay here, guys. Don't, don't, don't touch these sense guitar right now. Um, Anyway, so we are moving to a new giving platform, and basically, um, <laughs> there we go, okay, well, they helped for a little bit, that was good. We're moving to a new online giving platform over the next two months, so this isn't happening immediately, so you'll get more details and instructions as we go, but basically, uh, we have found a new online uh, platform, if you set up like a regular tithe and it comes out every month, or you give an online gift with a credit card, um, it's just switching to a different service is all it is. And the new service is actually going to be more affordable for us. It's going to save us uh, money as a church. And it actually has uh, some other kind of simpler options for us to be able to use. And so uh, you'll be getting details for that. If you are already giving through PushPay, like you have a, a recurring online uh, setup already, a, a gift, it'll still keep going until the end of June. But during this time, from now until then, we'll just need to transition and we'll send you all uh, uh, an email that has all the details that you need uh, in order to uh, make that transition. So uh, don't worry today. It's, it's going to be very, very simple. You're going to stop one and just move it to the next, okay? And it'll actually help our church out. It's simpler and it uh, is actually cheaper. And so it's going to save us uh, as a church uh, more money in the end. Uh, today, if you're joining us in person, you've got kids. We do have the May Kids Craft Kits available. So every week our kids team puts together a uh, great kids lesson video that has a Bible story, has uh, sing-along songs, and also has a craft demonstration for your kids to do at home. And we want to make it very easy for you, and so we put together a just a simple craft kit that has all the supplies that your kids need uh, for this whole month. And so for all five Sundays in May, a new video will come out, and then we have all the supplies ready. So if you're here in person, you can take those with you. Uh, for those families who are not in person with us today, <clears throat> excuse me, we will be delivering those uh, to your house later this afternoon. And so we'll get that to, uh, to you later today. But just want to let you know that the new craft kits are available. The video is already up and ready online, so as soon as you get that, you can uh, show the video to your kids there on YouTube, and then they can uh, do the craft as well. Uh, one last opportunity. So next Sunday is Mother's Day. And it's hard to believe that we're already celebrating Mother's Day. I'm, I think I'm still in Christmas mode. I actually wore my Christmas shirt. I don't know if you can tell. This is my Christmas shirt. It has got the green and the red, and it's so always wear this at Christmas. So, you know, why not May 2nd? Why not wear it? So, uh, but next Sunday is Mother's Day. And so one of the things that we want to do is, you know, our church used to meet at the Sage Hill Retirement Residence. We got to know a lot of people there, both staff and the residents. And uh, we have not been able to see them for 14 months now. 
Uh, and so we've been trying just to love on them from a distance. And one thing that we did at Christmas were Christmas cards and little poinsettia flowers for each uh, um, apartment there. Uh, this uh, Mother's Day, what we want to do is we want to have handmade cards uh, for every single uh, lady who lives there. And so uh, every woman who lives there is going to get a card uh, and a bar of chocolate from our church. So we need your help to help us make these cards. Uh, several of you have already responded on the WhatsApp or through email. We've already got those to you. But if you're here today and you would like to take some cards with you, they are over here on this table as well. And for those of you who are joining uh, online, uh, you can actually type there in the chat that you would like to get one, and we'll uh, uh, get one to you there. Um, and Or you can even uh, send an email if you go through our church website or if you have our info. Just let us know in some way, shape, or form that you would like to help. We're just asking families to make uh, 10 cards, simple hand handwritten note, kids can color, sticker, decorate, do whatever they would like. Um, and then we will pick them up from you at the end of the week on Friday. We will pick them up from you, and then that way we can deliver it to the Satchel Retirement residents on Saturday so they can get it out to the ladies the next day. And so I just want you to be aware for that. Uh, also, the, the kind of final thing we have is uh, we do meet here at the golf club. If you're here today and you want to stay and grab lunch to go, uh, their restaurant is open, so we actually have their menu. You can actually download and view it there on the worship guide. Uh, if you're interested and you're here physically and would like to take lunch with you, just want you to know that they are open today. Well, uh, thank you again for joining us for worship uh, today. And um, if you are joining us on Zoom, we are going to open up now for the Zoom Hangout. And so feel free to uh, stay around, unmute yourself, turn your video on, say hi to one another. Uh, and then uh, we'll try to also talk to you, uh, for those of us here in person. Uh, and just a reminder for those in person, we are going to have the time limit, uh, 15 minutes, just so we can kind of keep uh, everything uh, safe and short for everyone. So God bless and take care, and we will see you next week.